Alright, we're back again taking a look at a typical case of pseudo-intellectuals pretending to be experts in video games. And the person we'll be taking a look at today is none other than Tavalish Mayonez. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you might remember that I made a video on Under the Mayo back when he had his terrible ultra kill take, and since then I didn't hear much about him until I heard about his Trapang 2 review. And as you can probably imagine, it is once again incredibly revealing of his actual knowledge in game design. The title of this video is The Confused Design of Trapang 2 and comes from the one and only Mayonez. Oh, and real quick, before we start, in my video responding to one of his fanboys who are trying to beat a dead horse with the Ultra Kill drama, I said that Mayo wasn't the one who was perpetuating it. Well, I stand corrected, as when I glanced in the comments, I saw Mayo still throwing punches at the Ultra Kill player base when he's faced with criticism. So yeah, that is definitely my L for giving him the benefit of the doubt. Right, well, let's go ahead and see how Trapang 2's design is confusing. Trapang 2 is a game I have a lot to say about. Fear, the game it's largely based on, is one of my all-time favorites. I've been anxiously awaiting the release of Trapang 2 ever since the first demo, which I did not play. I saw it, immediately knew it was right up my alley, and decided to wait until it came out. I'm glad I did, because the initial joy of returning to Fear's combat does a lot for this game. If I had already spoiled it by playing the demo, I think I would be less satisfied with it. Because I am kinda unsatisfied. Excuse me, what the fuck? So he says that he is glad that he didn't play the demo, because he would be less satisfied with the game because of it. Yet then, he says that he is dissatisfied with the game. <laughs> you can't be glad to not be dissatisfied about something you're dissatisfied with. That's not how it works, my man. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but still a game I ultimately enjoyed and would recommend. The combat is really good, the guns feel amazing, the effects and graphics and gore are impressive. It's great. I'm not going to get into that stuff too much here, though. Instead, I want to talk about the core mechanics of Trapang 2 and how great they are when they work and how not great they are when they don't. Oh fuck, is he gonna play with only the pistol again? As I sometimes do, I'm just gonna refer you to G-Man's review if you want a more general look at the game. Hey, at least he is self-aware. No one sane would listen to him when it comes to game design. He covers combat, weapons, levels, music, story, interactivity. It's a good review. If that's what you're looking for, that's the video to watch. Here, we're gonna dig into some specifics that I think hold this game back. With six difficulty settings available, I went with number four. Very hard, just to feel it out. You can actually pick a difficulty before starting each mission, which is quite nice. Disappointingly, there is no information on what difficulty settings affect. Do you take more damage? Are enemies spongier? Are there fewer resources? Is the AI smarter or more aggressive? Do your powers burn out quicker? Who knows, and I'm not gonna play on a bunch of different difficulties and spend hours making measurements. Kind of a nitpicky point, but sure, it could have been explained better. Now just you wait guys, because it's all gonna go downhill from here and fast. By the way, I'm gonna speed this next part up, because it's just him explaining the game. However, I'm far less happy with the stamina system because I feel it's confused. I'm not against the game having stamina, I do love the idea of killing enemies giving you a stamina boost. So if you're always in the action, you're never out of stamina. Super cool mechanic. But there's two things that are just killing me. First, there are plenty of sections where there's no combat. In the campaign levels and at the base, which is your hub world. There's nothing to do here but run to the mission select screen and run back to the helicopter, and you awkwardly run out of stamina on the way. Okay, I just want to point one thing out right here. You can literally get from the helicopter to the mission selection in two stamina bars. However, in these clips, he is purposefully wasting his stamina as soon as it starts to recharge. Whereas if he just waited one more fucking second, he would have a full bar. So yeah, this is a complete non-issue. Maybe they could have made stamina something you only deal with in combat scenarios. 
It reminds me of Nightmare of Decay, where they updated the game to remove stamina from areas you've already cleared to make backtracking less tedious. Going from actively managing stamina in combat to constantly suffering from its limitations when not in combat is what makes the whole thing feel confused. Then don't move like you're in combat at all times, like fucking shit man. It is genuinely that simple. And the second point is that there's a horrible, horrible bug where if you press left or right with the run key and then press forward, you don't run. I'll break this down a bit for you. You cannot strafe run. Bruh, you have got to be actually fucking kidding me. So he is fully aware that you are unable to strafe run. Yet when he tries to strafe run and learns that he cannot, he calls it a bug. Dude, did you even think before you spoke? Which is fine. But you can run forward into the side by pressing both a side direction and forward. If you press forward plus run and then left or right, you run diagonally. If you walk forward and then start walking diagonally, and then press run, you run diagonally. If you walk to the side, and then press forward, and then press run, you run diagonally. But, if you walk to the side, and press run, before pressing forward, the run command does not register. Okay, this guy is genuinely fucking retarded. It doesn't register because you cannot strafe run. Holy fucking shit. This is seriously like bitching that the run doesn't register while you're standing still, and equally as retarded. Or worse yet, that you can't crouch jump in CSGO if you crouch first and then jump since then you just jump from a crouch position. No fucking shit, if you input the commands in the wrong order, they will not work. You would think this would be obvious to someone who calls himself an FPS veteran, but I guess his brain is too overloaded with game design knowledge to retain that bit of information. This also happens if you press run first and then move to the side and then press forward. Because you can't run while you're standing still, dipshit. In both situations, the run command is forgotten, and you're left slowly walking diagonally even though you're holding the run key. It leads to incredibly frustrating moments where you swear you're supposed to be running, but you aren't. Just because you were strafing around before you started trying to run, you can swear all you want, but if you don't input the command properly, it won't work. Simple as that, so where is the problem? Where is the problem? You can't run. I'd say 20% of my deaths were caused by this bug. Please, please, please fix this. How does something like this go unnoticed three years after the demo came out? Because most people know how inputting commands in a video game works. And those that don't likely don't play video games much, if at all. But of course there's always an exception, and congratulations, you are that exception. So on the topic of things feeling confused, I want to discuss the weapon carry number and the modification system. For a game so inspired by fear, and significantly ramping up the action and the number of enemies on screen, and the variety of enemy types, it's baffling to me that they would reduce the weapon number from 3 to 2. I have a serious question here. Do you not understand what the word inspired means? It means it took some elements from the source material but did something differently. <laughs> now not only is he proving he doesn't understand video games as a whole, but he is also proving he doesn't understand the English language. Someone pray for this man. I simply do not understand this limitation. 3 was a good number in fear. You could have a shotgun for close encounters, an assault rifle or SMG because they're fun, effective and versatile, and then keep a pistol on you for emergencies, or a sniper rifle, or the penetrator. Combat always felt very expressive because of this. In Trepang 2, only having two weapons severely impacted my enjoyment and experimentation. Okay, I want you guys to keep this clip in mind. So he is saying that because fear allowed you to have a loadout for every situation, according to him at least, that he found it more enjoyable. Just keep this in mind because it will age like milk in the summer. I mean, I'm not gonna put down this shotgun, it's too good, it's too fun. So I can only pick up one other weapon from the other six or however many there are? Okay, well a shotgun and a DMR pretty much cover my every need. But man, if I could just hold one more weapon, I would at least pull it out here and there out of a sense of curiosity and improvisation. And now he is only using the shotgun comboed with the DMR and stubbornly refuses to change any of his two weapons because it covers my every need and therefore I don't need to experiment. This is quite literally the ultra kill pistol thing all over again. You genuinely can't make this shit up. 
And in reference to that, it's also hypocritical, since him being able to hold all weapons in Ultra Kill didn't stop him from stubbornly playing with the Piercer only, so if having less weapon slots is the issue, what was up with that? You seriously cannot make this shit up. It's so bizarre to me that they would do it this way. But a two weapon limit absolutely can work if it has the systems to support it that push experimentation. Oh, you mean like the one you just displayed with the shotgun, otherwise known as running out of ammo? Ugh, yeah. If only this game had a system like that to make the weapon limit work. Can you imagine if this game had something like that? It would be so good. Halo is the perfect example. Yeah, you only have two weapons in Halo, but in Halo you run out of ammo on the battlefield and you run around picking up other weapons to improvise with. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, for the record, when I said this in the last clip, I meant it as a joke, but I guess the joke became a reality. And yes, this happens in Trupang 2 as well, sometimes. Not sometimes, all the fucking time. But some of you may remember a little game called Halo Infinite that completely broke the Halo combat loop by 1. allowing you to pick a fully stocked weapon of your choice before every mission, and 2. most importantly, scattering ammo boxes around the map, allowing you to refill the ammo of your preferred weapon. Now, instead of being pushed into experimentation through ammo limits, you can just run around with the same two guns of your preference the whole time and approach every mission the same way. I never put down the battle rifle because I never had to. I guess people like this kind of player freedom, but I will never understand the appeal. Okay, so remember that clip where he was saying how he found fear enjoyable because he could use the same loadout the whole time? Well, now he is saying that being able to do that is a bad thing. So which fucking is it? You can't have it both ways. It allows for homogenization of gameplay on a level that's just sad. Trepang 2 does the same thing. You can pick whatever weapons you want before every mission. And every mission is mostly keeping you stocked, whether it's ammo drops in combat, the eventual abundance of weapon boxes, where yes, you can find other weapons to use, but you can just as easily find a full ammo refill for the gun you've been depending on for the past hour. And how is that any different in Fear or the older Halo games? You could just as easily find the same weapon you've been using the entire time the same way as in Trepang 2 provided you use the common weapon in all cases. So this really just boils down to an argument of it's bad because it's different. Or side mission weapon boxes where you can use credits to refill guns at any moment before, after or even during combat rounds. And guess what? When you buy something from those boxes, the price of that item goes up and very quickly it will get to the point where you couldn't afford it even if you tried. So if anything, these boxes actually encourage you to buy different things so you'll get most bang for your buck. But of course, you're going to conveniently leave that out so you can push your bullshit narrative. It's very telling how much Mayo really knows about video games when the only time he can give good critique is when he artificially creates the problem himself. It's really fucking pathetic. I wouldn't have as much of a problem with this if you could just hold a third weapon. Keeping my primaries stocked and switching out a third depending on its utility and my own ideas for playing around and experimenting. Flip-flopping, yet again. So is being able to have the same loadout a problem or not? But only having two weapon slots and allowing me to refill ammo so liberally, it's just Halo Infinite all over again. Occasionally I ended up in situations where I had to throw down my shotgun and pick up a rifle with only 30 bullets, use it up and then grab something else, and these were some of the best moments I had. They're just so few and far between, because the game seems dead set on making sure I'm as comfortable as possible. Objectively false. You could play that way the entire time if you really wanted to, but once fucking again, just like with Ultra Kill, he limits himself to playing the most boring way he can think of, so that he can use that as some sort of a pathetic point against the game. At this point, I'm convinced he just wants games to hold his hand the whole time. In which case, go play something else since this game is obviously not for you. It's so weird because fear regularly had me in situations where I gotta set down that low ammo penetrator or assault rifle because picking up a new gun with full ammo is a more advantageous position going forward. And Trepang 2 does just that all the time, so where is the problem? What is the problem? It's sad to see that kind of design get pushed aside in a spiritual sequel. 
I'm not saying I didn't have fun or experiment in the sandbox, I did. I like this combat, there's good challenge and excitement to be had, but it certainly isn't as well designed as fear regarding weapon variety incentive. Yet you fail to provide a single valid argument for this. You know this video is bad when the nitpicky point he made about the difficulties is unironically his best one. I feel locked into things too often because of these limitations, and it applies to grenades as well. There are six different equipment types, frag grenades, flashbangs, firebombs, proximity mines, rat bombs, and tomahawks. But in another baffling design decision, you're not allowed to carry more than one type. I can run around with five frag grenades, which is nice, but I'd much rather have access to a smaller number of two or three different equipment types to give myself more dynamic strategy options, like you see in Halo, like you see in The Division, like you see in Resistance Fall of Man, like you see in <gasps> Doom Eternal. Oh shit guys, he said the thing! On a serious note, have you ever thought about the fact that instead of hoarding grenades, the game wants you to use them on the spot? Or gives them to you as pity grenades? Because in case you didn't notice, when you grab enemies, you can pull the pins from their grenades and throw them. And different enemies have different grenades. So if you want to use a specific grenade, grab a specific enemy. But I guess that required a bit too much thinking for you. Hell, like in Fear, you could hold three different grenade types in Fear and use any of them at any time. Frag grenade, proximity mine, and remote bomb. Why couldn't we have that? I don't understand how the developers didn't think that setting down a proximity mine to cover your exit and then throwing a flashbang into the next room wouldn't create more fun moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Now I have to question how much of this game he even played, because when you start a combat encounter, you usually get locked in the arena, so why would you need to cover your exit? A nitpick for sure, but it really piles up. And another part of the problem is the modification system. Whereas Fear's weapons were static, Trepang 2 allows for weapon customization through upgrade parts found in little bits of exploration and completing side missions. Now, I love the connection between side missions and weapon upgrades. Not only are these fun, action-packed, wave-based challenges, but you get something from it that applies to the main campaign. Great. Unfortunately, I think it just contributes to the confusion because when you customize and upgrade a weapon in a video game, is it not because you like that weapon and want to hold on to it? Or, just maybe, is that you can get a small edge at the start of the next combat encounter. Such a complicated conclusion, I know. Not to mention, some enemies literally drop modded weapons, so if anything, it serves to further expand the sandbox. So what's next? Is he going to complain there's too much content? This isn't Borderlands, I can only hold two weapons. I've got an incendiary round shotgun that destroys everyone, and a rifle with a laser sight and a 2x scope. I'm shredding over here. And yeah, that grenade launcher is really cool, but after I use it, I'm gonna have to remember where I dropped one of my modded weapons and come back to get it. Wait, didn't he complain that there's no reason for him to switch out his shotgun and DMR for something else? Yet now he switched it out for a VHS with an optic. So I guess that entire rant was completely fucking pointless. And besides having a rare base moment for using a Croatian assault rifle, incendiary rounds on a shotgun also come with their own set of strengths and drawbacks so, once again, it's all just another element in the sandbox for you to play around with. It is genuinely that simple. It's a weird position to be in. Or if, say, my incendiary round shotgun runs out of ammo, and there's no shotgun ammo in the next room, normally I'd be okay just dropping the shotgun to use another weapon for a while, and that's fun, but the next shotgun I find isn't gonna have the incendiary mod, and I don't wanna lose it so I guess I'll just be running around the next areas with an empty shotgun for a while. And yet another contradiction. So earlier he was bitching about having enough ammo to never have to swap weapons, yet now he is bitching about being out of ammo. So once again, turns out that entire rant about refilling ammo was also completely pointless. See what I mean? These systems don't work together. Isolated, they are good systems, but together they end up working against each other, and it ends up making Trepang 2 a much less interesting combat experience than I wanted it to be. He says as he's sitting in a corner with the DMR. If this doesn't prove that he's just making up issues for the sake of making them up, I don't know what will. 
It's awesome, don't get me wrong, slow motion sliding under a guy and blasting him in the air as he flies around in mid-2000s physics engine madness is really fun. Movement and vaulting is fast and snappy, loading times are lightning fast and you get right back to the action almost immediately. While the campaign isn't exactly compelling, I do enjoy the level variety, as that was one of the flaws in Fear. The whole thing was basically just office environments. I love that enemies all drop a small shard of armor to incentivize you to run or slide over their corpses and stay in the action. I love that grabbing enemies lets you use their grenade by throwing their body and watching it explode. Well, would you look at that? Yet another thing he was needlessly bitching about got solved. I'm happy that checkpoints don't refill your health, so you find yourself in tough situations that you gotta overcome. It's awesome that slides and jump kicks don't cancel reload animations. I appreciate that the missions are more than just key hunting and switch hitting. You gotta shoot to destroy stuff sometimes, or throw bodies into generators and they explode. It's good stuff, it works. I'd like to replay the game, and I would if it didn't force me to delete my profile. Yeah, no profiles, just the one. How does that make it past the testers to a full release? I like having my completed save because I can replay any level I want, including side missions, and set the difficulty. Holy fuck, it's almost like you can replay the entire game on any difficulty. Seriously. If you bring up a problem you have and then say how it was solved in the very next sentence, why even bring it up? Why would I give that up just to start a fresh save? Again, weird decisions, like the customizable appearance options, there's no multiplayer, and I don't think I saw a single reflective surface where I can even see myself, so what's the point? Maybe I missed something here, I'm sure you'll let me know. Come the fuck on. When I said that part about him bitching about too much content, I meant it as a fucking joke. But this guy is legitimately bitching about the game, giving you more things to unlock after you finish the main game. Like, shouldn't it be a good thing that the game gives you more value for your money? But I guess Mayonez just has to bitch about everything, otherwise he literally fucking explodes or some shit. Alright, that's all I have to say. Again, I like Trepang 2, it'll be in my best games of the year list, for sure. That still doesn't erase everything you said. Whether you like the game or not is irrelevant. If your points are stupid, your points are stupid. Simple as that. I'm just also disappointed by it. And instead of reviewing the whole package like everyone else does, I wanted to really pick apart some of the issues I think it has that I don't hear people discussing. I like how he straight up admits no one has a problem with these things except him. Like bro, did you ever consider that if everyone else is the problem, that the problem is maybe in you? What did you think? Did you like Trepang 2? Do you see yourself replaying it or is it more of a one and done sort of thing? Like, subscribe, ring the bell, catch the latest episode of Mayo Movie Club. See you later. And with that, we're finally done with this dog shit video. So I guess the moral of the story here is, Trepang 2 sucks because reasons. Yeah, another typical case of Mayonez trying to prove how much he knows about game design by making up issues and in turn proving he doesn't know anything. Well then, be sure to like and subscribe to boost me in the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.